Uh, so let us start by holding hands and I'm going to lead us in a prayer. Grab my. Most gracious God, we thank you most for the gift of life and for this very day. We've come from our homes and communities, many of which are impacted by pollution and proposed projects that would harm even our homes, much less our, our land and the air and the water that sustains us. So we thank you, Creator. We call you by many names from our religious and spiritual traditions and even those who call you by no name. And know that in your very source, you are beyond words and your mystery surrounds us and is within us. So we thank you for being able to gather here. We thank you for our officials, even those whom we, with whom we disagree that they are here hopefully in service of all of our people of North Carolina and we're glad and thankful for people like Representative Autry who was with us this morning whose heart is very grounded in the environment and in what's good for our economy and people of our state. So as we walk today and as we pray and sing and fellowship and come to know each other better May your spirit of love and mercy and care be with us. May we speak from our hearts and speak firmly and attest to our values and our principles which call us here. So we're thankful for all of our religious and spiritual traditions that help us to transform ourselves and to support the transformation of our communities. In your name we pray. Amen. So, Kay and John, if you would join me and put these letters to our officials out here. You have your letter, bring your letter, yes. Each of these letters is to one of the officials. There's uh, four to four or five or six to the legislator officials, to our governor, our secretary, at DEQ, our Attorney General, and one for the Utility Commission, and we will send uh, common letters to all the Utility Commissioners, and we're going to send all of these letters to every member of the House and Senate. Um, if you were at the press conference, you heard a little bit about the letters. There's a lot of repetition in them because we're calling for the suspension of all fossil fuel infrastructure for a year, so that we can finally have a public dialogue and discourse about how to develop a public policy uh, related to the environment and our economy around uh, energy and energy resources. So these letters are very special. A lot of thought from a lot of people uh, went into uh, the concerns that are expressed in these letters. These letters will not only be delivered today, they can be used throughout our faith community and our organizations to be improved as we issue this invitation to our elected officials to join us in moving toward 100% clean, carbon-free, renewable energy in this state. So at this time, I'd like to ask uh, Avram, and today we're going to have people introduce themselves. Um, and I'd call on Avram to come forth, or I'll... Hey, actually, can I defer my statement until 11 o'clock? I thought that's good. Yes, you can. Okay. I'll okay. Do that. that would be fine. All right. But we're going to... People introduce themselves, Mac. Yeah. Um, I was going to wait till 11. Whatever. Whatever you like. Let's, let's wait. Uh, I'd rather wait to have everyone who's going to be here uh, and then we can take that about 15 minutes um, for everyone to introduce themselves uh, when everyone is here. Otherwise, we'll have to do it again. 
Um, so at this time, we have a very special person among all the special people that are here. Uh, Sandra Clark, uh, if you'd come over here. And you get to stand beside another special person on your right. And um, Sandra, I'm going to let her introduce herself, but I, I have to say I've gotten to know her well. I can cry over how much I love her. Uh, and she, like we, even closer to her land than our land in Pembroke, uh, is burdened by this pipeline. And Tom, her husband, will speak later. Um, Tom's more well known than Sandra is. <laughs> But, you know, it, it takes two to, to build character and more. So I'm going to give this uh, talking stick to you, Sandra, to share from your heart as we begin our day to day. Thank you and welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Sandra Clark. It's a quarter to and ten. I'm here. The police is looking and, uh, They're going to ask us for a mess, and I can't find to, the one um, that you had that said covered everything. I about the pipeline. You said we didn't need to, I didn't need to the print it off. The more that no. I started well, researching it, the more that I began to worry. And, you need to worry and I think there are so alternatives to clean energy, and I think that we need to do that. We need to change. You know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. But I think it is broken, so we need to fix it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, with that, I just want to say that, um, that I'm glad to be here today. But I am uh, concerned, and I do want clean energy, the clean energy, the true energy. And so that's why I'm speaking today on behalf of, of us and on behalf of my grandchildren, your grandchildren. There is a better way. And so um, that's what all I want to say from my heart today. But I thank y'all. Can you share uh, where you live in relation to the proposed pipeline? Um, yes, sir. The pipeline, we live within about 900 feet of the blast zone. And so um, that's a concern to me. And some, you know, uh, you could wake up, you could go to bed that night, and you might not wake up. So uh, that is very concerning. And a lot of times, uh, people that live on the rural areas, people aren't um, concerned because they don't have to deal with it. So it is a concern when you live near the problem and it could be, you know, you could go to bed that night and there could be a blast and there are so many uh, blasts on, so many um, of the pipelines that are exploding today. That's what's kind of concerned me, concerned me to realize this is not a little problem, this is a big problem. And um, that that's why that is why I am here. <laughs> okay, Maple, come on over here. Beside this, this can be our little altar here. We're going to practice the song that Maple's going to teach us, and we'll sing it later, maybe even twice uh, during the day today. Okay, you guys heard me up in Nash County. This is an old song. And uh, it's just traditional. I heard it was Native American. I don't know. It's just about the river. It's short. And I found another verse about the wind also. I might add that now and we'll see if we like it or not. And I, I, I hope we're, I remember. We're supposed to so, sing along, okay, right? Okay, river keeps on flowing, flowing and growing. The river keeps on flowing down to the sea. Mother, carry me. Your child I'll always be. This is the river, the mother. Mother, carry me down to the sea. So. And then the next verse is about wind. I'll just read it and we can maybe do that. The wind is blowing, blowing and flowing. The wind is blowing all through the trees. Gentle wind carrying me. Spirit will always be. Gentle wind carrying me. So I may be free. So I thought, well, we, we can be free of fossil fuels if we have more renewables, right? So that made sense to me. So. All right. And, uh, one, two, three. The river keeps on flowing, rolling and flowing. The river keeps on rolling down to the sea. Mother, carry me. Mother, carry me. Your child I'll always be. Mother, carry me down to the sea. 
Keep it doing. Okay. And the next one is the blowing. Okay. The wind. It is blowing, blowing and flowing. The wind is blowing all through the trees. Let's try that. Oh, one, two, three. The wind, it is blowing, blowing and flowing. The wind, it is blowing all through the trees. Gentle wind carrying me, spirit will always be. Gentle wind carrying me, so I may be free. So gentle, gentle wind carry me. <laughs> spirit, you'll always be. Spirit, you'll always be. Gentle wind carry me, so I may be free. Now sing the whole thing all the way through. Okay, so river. Okay, we'll yeah, all the way through. Go a and just keep it going. The river. The river, she keeps flowing, flowing and growing. The river, she keeps flowing down to the sea. Mother, carry me, your child I'll always be. Mother, carry me. Down to the sea, the wind, the wind, she keeps blowing, blowing and flowing, the wind, she keeps blowing, all through the trees, gentle wind, gentle wind, carry me, spirit, you'll always be, gentle wind, carry me. So I may be free. Nice job, everybody. Thank you. Um, Y'all, this is our first stop along our pilgrimage today, and um, we're going to make sure we have everyone's emails and contact information so that everyone can get a copy of these five letters. Um, to uh, eight, five of the eight energy agents that we've identified, as well as uh, Reverend Sadler's letter. Um, so this is our first stop at the legislative building. Many of the letters repeat, repeat our invitation for our officials to join us in moving toward a uh, carbon-free, renewable energy uh, present and future. So we won't repeat all of the letters we will read different portions of them. So Kay Rybold from here and Rybold here from uh, Raleigh is going to read part of the letter to our uh, elected officials, our leaders, in both political parties. Invitation to House and Senate Majority and Minority Leaders of the North Carolina Legislature. We invite you to join the interfaith community along with environmental, and justice organizations in North Carolina in making a commitment to 100% carbon-free renewable energy. It's time for our beloved state to take seriously the call and challenge to make a full transition from fossil fuels to clean renewable energy that is carbon-free. In order to make this responsible transition, we request that you, number one, support the suspension of all new carbon-based and fossil fuel energy resources and infrastructure for one year, including the proposed Atlantic Coast Pipeline. Yeah. 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 The Valley Pipeline, along with further biogas and yeah. biomass development, use and exploitation. All of these energy resources are major producers of carbon emissions. With their expanded development, our state will never be able to reduce 
our carbon emissions and achieve a low carbon future. Number two, work with the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality to sponsor public hearings across North Carolina during this one year suspension, similar to those held in response to specific permit applications for the purpose of receiving public input and proposals on how we can achieve the goal of developing and utilizing 100% carbon-free renewable energy with reliance on solar, wind, and geothermal energy production, storage, right. yeah. and consumption. Yeah. 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 So, during, number three, during this one year of deferring carbon-based fossil fuel and non-fossil fuel development, support the North Carolina Department of Environmental, Environmental Quality in establishing and proposing a realistic and responsible timeline for achieving 100% carbon-free renewable energy in North Carolina. And, and number four, during this one-year delay, support DEQ and the Department of Environmental Quality in receiving oral and written testimony on whether or not a bridge fuel is needed as we transition off of our dependency on carbon-based fossil fuel and non-fossil fuel sources of energy. Furthermore, assess this need for a bridge fuel and if it is determined that a bridge fuel is necessary, engage in further public deliberations on which bridge fuel is the most environmentally and economically responsible. We are confident that you will find with rapidly developing technology, yes. storage capacity, yes. yes, and the increased efficiency of renewable energy sources yes. and declining costs will make a bridge fuel unnecessary. And impractical. Yes. And there's more to that letter, and you will hear more uh, in our next stop uh, to the governor. But that letter is very, of course, very similar. <laughs> My name is Tom Clark. I'm from Cumberland County, North Carolina. And Governor Cooper, just like you and your father, all of us live between creeks. And I'm here to let you know that ACP is not going to happen. Uh, Tom is going to pick up on the governor's letter below uh, what was read for the legislative leaders. His letter is basically the same. We do have a paragraph that uh, provides the website for the report on the call to suspend. Uh, again, there's a whole report on the call, and it will, it will be on your copies. We do have copies for you um, to hand out later. So Tom's going to start reading uh, where Kay left off, um, and the wording is different because uh, our governor has the authority to act in the ways that we're asking him to act. Governor Cooper, we invite you to join the interfaith community along with the environmental and justice organizations in North Carolina in making a commitment to 100% carbon-free renewable energy. Yes. It is time for our beloved state to take seriously the call and challenge to make a full transition from fossil fuels to clean, renewable energy that is carbon free. Yes. In order to make this responsible transition, we request that you authorize the North Carolina Attorney General to collaborate with the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality and investigate the appearance of fraud and are the fraudulent misrepresentation of natural gas, unnatural industrial proponents claim that it is a natural, clean, and green fossil fuel. Energy source when it is hydraulically fracked, piped, burned, used, and exported without causing significant harm to the environment and global warming. The majority of scientists including those of the U.S. National Aeronautical and Space Administration, now acknowledge that the massive rise in global warming in recent years is due to hydraulic fracturing, fracturing of carbon-based methane and ethane gas that is pressurized piping, burning, and use. Yes. 
A full report on the appearance of fraud and fraudulent misrepresentation of the Atlantic Coast Pipeline and Duke Energy has been published by the Alliance to Protect Our People and the Places We Live, written by Nancy LaPlaca, an energy expert. The report is, in, is entitled, Atlantic Coast Pipeline LLC's Appearance of Fraudulent Misrepresentation of This Product and Project can be found at the website. I'll not go into the website. <laughs> at the end of the one year of suspension, I said one year suspension, Governor Cooper, authorized the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality to determine and propose a comprehensive, carbon-free, clean, renewable energy and climate action plan for the state of North Carolina. Research and database plans that have already been disseminated in North Carolina provide direction and concrete designs for consideration. The plans, resolutions, agreements, and commitments already made by many metropolitan areas in North Carolina to achieve and reach these goals can also be used as models and guides for a statewide carbon-free renewable energy and climate action plan. Yes. If it is determined that natural gas is not a responsible, it is not natural gas, is not a responsible and viable bridge fuel. All, all future construction, all, all future construction and development of carbon-based methane and ethane producing gas, including all gas pipelines and plants presently proposed or under construction. If it is determined that there has been and is more than an appearance of fraudulent misrepresentation of the value of a particular fossil fuel, support the Attorney General in filing charges against their proponents of this product in the court of law. Such action can counter threats and claims of unfair and or unlawful action on the part of the state of North Carolina. Empower the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality to assess biogas and biomass in similar fashion while their future development is also deferred for one year. Deferred for one year, Governor yeah. Cooper. Yes. Furthermore, authorize the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality to pursue a comprehensive approach to coal ash relief and recovery and empower the Office of the North Carolina Attorney General to use every legal avenue possible to challenge restrictive federal laws and regulations that inhabit or discourage the most environmentally responsible and creative solutions in the coal ash, unnatural disaster in North Carolina. Because, Governor Cooper, we also live between the creeks. They're just different. They're important to us. They mean a lot to us. All right. So Tom's going to deliver the letter to the governor at the receptionist and Sandra's going to take him some clean water as a gift. Good morning. Good morning. We'd like to leave this letter to Governor Cooper. Okay. This right here is some water from the grandfather's pond that the Atlantic Coast Pipeline is going to be coming across. Mm -hmm. And it's probably going to pollute it because it's going to be right on the very end of the pond. Okay. And from the past history, what we're doing in Virginia, I already know that this will probably be the last clean water out of that pond if that pipeline is. So presenting as a gift to him. Okay. As a gift. And just okay. let him know that we read the book Between mm -hmm. the Creeks, mm -hmm. and we live between the creeks too, and okay. they're very important to us. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> this is our. North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality uh, that is responsible for all the permit applications. And because we're members of different faith and spiritual communities, the spirit of this day is we're not here to admonish. We're here to invite our elected officials to join us in working and being committed to 100% clean, carbon-free, renewable energy. So our, our invitation today is for our staff in the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality to join us. And the letter to Secretary Reagan is very similar to the letter to the General Assembly and to our government. And we're asking Secretary Reagan and the staff 
to support, support the call for suspension of all new carbon-based and fossil fuel energy resources and infrastructure for one year, including the ACP, the MVP, along with further biogas and biomass development. And this includes the harm being done to our forests and the cutting of our forests for wood chips that are being exported overseas uh, to Europe for energy yeah. there. Yeah. We want to protect our rivers, our air, our forests, our lives, and our communities. And right now the tail is wagging the dog. Yeah. All the DDQ can do is respond to every individual proposal that the energy applies for. And they have to go by the state and regulations that are determined by lawmakers, many of whom are not really committed to the environment, and many of whom are lobbied very heavily uh, by the utility and fossil fuel industry, including uh, FERC, that needs to take the word federal out of its name. And regulation. They don't regulate anything. So we're also encouraging and supporting our Department of Environmental Quality in holding public hearings across North Carolina during this one-year suspension because they know how to do this fairly well, similar to those held in response to specific permit applications. But instead of us filing a singular permit application, we're requesting that they join us in a new policy application for the entire state to take input from the public and develop a new renewable energy carbon-free climate action plan for our state and join us in this process. We're also asking that during this one year of deferring carbon-based fossil fuel and non-fossil fuel carbon-based products to establish and propose a realistic and responsible timeline for achieving 100% carbon-free renewable energy in North Carolina. Right now, all the DEQ can do is to do what? Respond to what? Every individual proposal that industry applies for. So right now, private industry is determining and directing public environmental policy. We can never protect our environment or our lives if we go one by one, application one by one by one. We won't have an environment left. So we need to suspend all fossil fuel infrastructure development and plans and develop as a state a new renewable energy carbon-free plan and future. So we have the letter to go to Secretary Regan we respect his work, and we're going to meet with him, as with all the other eight energy agents, and discuss these uh, invitations with him on a one-to-one -one basis. So who would like to take uh, Dr. Regan's letter in and deliver it to the reception? Mr. Secretary Regan, we know there were unanswered questions okay. about the pipeline, and then... Governor Cooper interfered in the process, we feel. We'd like to have those records released about the questions, the unanswered questions. Hey, that I don't know if that's all in the letter. We just read it. Oh, yeah, they have. They have. And it's we're, being we're delayed, so we would like to. That's not about you. It's no, we're, we're working on records requests as fast as we can. We think, you know, we respect the DEQ and your science. We respect science. We would just like to science to come out. Now it's not working to wetlands, it's not working jobs for very little. Okay. We appreciate it. And still fighting because we know it's the right thing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have a good day. What do we need? Clean water. What do we need? Now. What do we need? Okay, our uh, friends, this is our 
Um, one, two, three. Fourth stop today in our pilgrimage to uh, elected officials and energy agents in the state. And for your civics lesson, this is the home of our North Carolina Attorney General, uh, Mr. Josh Stein. Many of us have had the opportunity to meet with Josh and his staff and discuss uh, environmental issues with him. And because so many of these issues are legal, the letter to Attorney General Stein is the longest of all the letters that we're delivering today. So I'm not going to read the whole thing. A lot of it is similar to what was said in the other letters. I'm just going to read the part specifically uh, that's related to the legal issues that we're addressing. Number two, investigate the appearance of fraud and of the fraudulent misrepresentation of natural gas. And Tom has already read the description of this. The industry proponents claim that it is natural, safe, clean, and green fossil fuel energy source when it is hydro hydraulically fractured, piped, burned, used, and exported without causing significant harm to the environment and global warming. So say the proponents. But the majority of scientists, including those from NASA, now acknowledge that the massive rise in global warming in recent years is due to fracking of carbon-based methane and ethane gas and its pressurized piping, burning, and use. Three, investigate the allegations of segmentation by the Atlantic Coast Pipeline for segmenting out the Piedmont gas pipeline running from Pembroke to Hamlet, North Carolina, from the ACP project proposal and permitting process. Also, the allegations of segmentation by the ACP's continual denial of their pre-existing plans to continue the ACP where? Into South Carolina, beyond the alleged terminus. Where? In Pembroke, North Carolina. This pre-existing plan is well documented, but has continued to be denied by the ACP even in its last monthly response to the DEQ inquiry on December 20th, 2017. The alleged segmentation is critical. It calls in question the entire scope and scale of the ACP state and federal permit application. Are you with me? Yes! Well, here's why it calls into question both permits. If these plans pre-existed, and were included in the state and federal permit applications, the scope, scale, and infrastructure of the ACP would be, and potentially is very different than is outlined in its permits. Furthermore, it raises serious questions regarding the pre-existing intent to extend ACP gas all the way to St. Elba Island, Georgia, where it will be exported to foreign lands including Europe. This purpose was stated by Senator Burr in 2015 and quoted in the Wilson Times. Exportation of the ACP gas also raises serious questions regarding the primary purpose of the ACP and its alleged claim to primarily serve the three host states with natural gas. Furthermore, the exportation of ACP gas will undoubtedly raise the price of not only ACP gas to consumers, but potentially all natural gas in the eastern United States. There is growing resistance to gas pipelines, and the use of natural gas as an alleged bridge fuel throughout the United States and across the globe is well documented. The serious harm to the climate and global warming due to hydraulic fracturing and consumption is now well documented. The utility industry is challenged to increase the demand to meet its newfound supply of frack gas. As the Dominion PowerPoint slide indicates, the rush is on to get pipelines permitted and constructed. While some North Carolina officials claim their opposition to the offshore drilling of oil, the Atlantic Coast Pipeline opened the floodgates to offshore gas. These concerns
concerns need to be fully investigated by both the North Carolina Attorney General and the North Carolina Utility Commission. Both share responsibility for consumer protection and the price of ACP gas will certainly rise once it reaches Georgia and is exported. So that's the gist of the letter to the Attorney General. And here's what I want to end with to let you know what's not only going to happen to the letter with our officials, what will happen with it with the community. The newly formed North Carolina Creation Care Network publicly submits these recommendations for consideration. At the same time, the North Carolina Creation Network will circulate these petitions throughout North Carolina as a foundation for moral and spiritual discernment and deliberation on how to shape our inner faith and inner spiritual voice and power regarding this most important environmental, economic, social, political, moral, religious, and spiritual issue and challenges of our time and age. Upon completion of this deliberative process, the North Carolina Creation Care Network, along with its civic partners, will select a broad-based, multi-sectoral team of North Carolina citizens to partner and co-labor with you, Mr. Secretary, Mr. Attorney General, Mr. Governor, and all of our legislatures and your agencies in incarnating and improving and fulfilling this mission of achieving 100 percent what? Thank you. Who would like to deliver the letter to the receptionist at our Attorney General's office? Kay would love to. Let's give Kay a big hand. She's already been to meet with him. All right. Well, we go. We're going to give it to them and where are we going to take it? Back to our community. All right? And we want you to personally send it, when you get your email version, send it to your legislators so they won't be able to say they didn't see it when uh, Representative Graham sent it to them, okay? All right. Kate gets back. We'll uh, pilgrimage and we can go individually at your own pace back to the New Park, where we're meeting right across from the Halifax Mall. Some of us have water and cooler and drinks in our cars across the parking lot. Thank you. This is for
getting the folks from the uh, about the uh, Mountain Valley pipeline and mm -hmm. joining that right now. So uh, look forward to reading this and learning from the folks in this field. Good. Thanks so much. Good to meet you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry if I was right in the middle of the background of your photo. That's what I'm proud of all of that, you know. It's not about issues, it's about the relationship. Here's the problem. All right. We were wondering what happened to you. Well, actually, the uh, AG himself did not come down, but Blake... Oh, wait a minute. Here. Uh, I'm ready to go. That's what I wanted to report to. It's not working. I wanted to report that the AG, Josh Scott, did not come down, but his, his uh, senior counsel, Blake Thomas, came down. He said they're very concerned. He took the letter, uh, so I'm glad that we were able to reinforce our message that we've been continuing to press with uh, the AG. to destroy our planet. One, we are the people. Two, you can't ignore us. Three, we will not let you destroy our planet. And the people are beautiful.